everybody. Hope you're doing all well on this Wednesday afternoon. It's great to see the sunshine and get the kids out of the house for a bit of fresh air as well. So I'm just going to show you today another really quick recipe, okay? I know now we're all sort of more indoors and feeling a bit more trapped is that just because we're in the house we don't necessarily want to be cooking sort of 12 hours that we're awake. So we want to kind of make dishes as well that we can sort of bulk cook, stick in the freezer or that we can stick in the fridge and have some tonight and some tomorrow for lunch or some for tomorrow's dinner, okay? So that way is you're kind of enjoying the time off with your kids, you're maybe in the garden, you're catching up on work as well if you're like me as well. But you do actually, um, sort of it's nice not to know you have to cook every single meal from scratch. So I'm going to show you a very quick vegetarian um, curry. Okay, so it's my chickpea um, and veggie curry as well with some lovely spinach as well and spices as well. Okay, so we're going to start off, just warm up your pan and we're going to start off with just a red onion. Okay, so we're just going to slice that down. Okay, so you'll see the stuff I'm using as well is going to be um, things that you definitely have in your fridge. Okay, because I do know at the moment things are... Um, ingredients are a little bit short as well. Sometimes the fresh fresh vegetables is not as plentiful. So again, you just want something very, very simple. So again, just slicing down, move that out of the way there, slicing down some red onion. Okay, so we'll actually use the whole red onion because they're so, so tasty, okay? So again, roughly slicing it down. Don't get too caught up into like it has to be one size or another, okay? So along with our red onion, we're also going to be using some lovely courgette as well, okay? Sometimes courgettes are absolutely gorgeous, but from what I hear from people is that I don't really know what to do with them, but they're absolutely gorgeous. They're little sponges as well for flavour. So get used to popping them in your curries, get used to popping them in your soups as well. So we're just going to use half a courgette, and again, you're just going to put that into little chunks, okay? So I shall show you now the size I'm thinking. And they cook very, very quickly as well. So we're looking probably about that size. So what's that, about one inch square? Okay, so our oil is getting nice and hot in there now. So we're just going to go in with some of our vegetables. We'll go in first with our onion. Okay. So I might actually turn up the heat on that a little bit. And again, make this, as I say, in a bit more bulk and then pop it into the freezer and you can pull it out during the week and not have to worry about, as I say, cooking from scratch. So get the heat up on that, get those onions in there, go in with your courgette. And this is a real rough and ready one as well, is just pile everything in and let it cook away. Okay, we're also gonna go in with some green beans. So I just have some plain green beans here. You could go in with launch too, sugar snap beans, peas, you can go in with just frozen peas as well from the freezer, whatever you have left over in the bottom of that uh, vegetable, cup, uh, vegetable um, cabinet in your fridge. So again, a little handful of our green beans, just snip off the top bit here, you'll see the little spiky bit, so just snip that off and you can get rid of that and again, just chop them nice and roughly and we're going to pop them straight into the pan to cook with the other vegetables as well. Okay, so just give everything a good mix around there, just to get it all coated. I had in there, by the way, about one teaspoon of um, coconut oil, I have to remember that, that, and again, that's just being coated in the coconut oil. Now, we're going to go in as well, there's your beautiful red pepper, or your beautiful yellow peppers I was talking about in my other video, about using food first to get all your nutrients to support your immune system. Our lovely yellow orange peppers packed full of vitamin C as well and vitamin A as well. So get used to just popping those straight in. So again, we'll go with about half of one of these. And again, what these do as well is not only are they absolutely full of nutrients, but the colour of them as well. So you're eating with your eyes as well. And to be honest with you, because we're eating at home all the time now and we're not getting to eat out or sort of go for meals, is I think it's even more important to enjoy what you're eating and not that it's a chore where you're just eating something for the sake of it, okay? The joy still has to be there with your food. So, I may as well just go in with the whole thing and I can stick it in my own freezer. So, just chop that down and again, the last bit, in it comes. Now, give everything a really good mix around. 
end there. And we are just going to sweat that down for a second. Now, while that's cooking away, we're going to get on to sort of the flavourings that are going to go into our curry. So we have some lovely uh, garlic, fresh garlic. And um, I know I have seen people sort of, um, you know, um, talking about like the garlic paste and the lazy garlic and stuff. They're grand. But the only thing is, I will say, is that they won't have the nutritional goodness that you have in the fresh garlic, okay? So your, uh, your garlic is anti, um, antibacterial, antimicrobial, antiviral as well, okay? And great for your digestive system as well. So again, if you can get your hands on the fresh, it does last quite a while. Okay, so we're going to go with one clove of garlic. Let's give everything a bit of a mix around again here. And it's all just cooking down through lovely. So I have that on kind of like a medium high heat just to sweat it off initially. So with our garlic, just crush it down with the back of your knife and then just slice it down nice and finely. Again, if your knife skills aren't great, grate it on the back of your uh, cheese grater or one of the little micro plane graters, the little hand ones. And we're gonna go in with that. And then your ginger, we're probably gonna go in with most of that. So that's probably like a thumb size, okay? The ginger, really, really good properties in it as well. Very good health properties. Very anti-inflammatory as well. So you're looking for all that goodness in the food at the moment to keep us well. Okay, so we're just going to take off the skin. And with the skin, a little tip for you is just using a spoon, you can actually peel off the skin that way, okay? So just using it to run down the garlic, or run down the ginger, and the skin just comes away easily. And then what you can do is actually you can freeze your ginger into the freezer, and then whenever you need it, is you just take it out, and you just grate it frozen into whatever dish you are making. And it keeps perfectly well. Okay, so it means that you always have fresh ginger in there as well. Okay, so we've got about that much left of it, and I'm just gonna to start to slice that down. So you're just gonna slice it nice and thinly into little matchsticks. And then you're just gonna cut it across. So you're gonna end up with little dice bits in your dish. I mean, I love getting um, chunks of ginger, but I do know that a lot of people don't necessarily like it. Now you're gonna need a good sharp knife for this as well. The other thing as well you can do, is even with the fresh ginger, is grate it into your dish. And then it means that you're, nobody is getting a big chunk of ginger. And um, yeah, you know, it doesn't offend anybody. Now, I'm gonna give you a look at this now. Okay, now we are only going to cook this very quickly because we want to keep all the colour in there as well and it is a quick dish. So I'm just going to give you a quick show of that so you can see the beautiful colours in there. Absolutely delicious. That yellow pepper is just gorgeous in there. Okay, right, let's go in with the other flavours. We're going to go in with a little pinch of our chilli flakes, okay, and what I'm trying to do here is to say that you don't need everything fresh. So even your herbs and everything like that is, it is going to be harder to get them at the moment, is don't be afraid to use your dried stuff as well, your spices as well. We have some nice curry powder there. So we're going to go in with about a teaspoon of curry powder. I don't tend to measure myself, everything just goes in by hand. And we'll give all that a mix around. And there is the most gorgeous smell of ginger and curry sauce coming out you now. Beautiful. And then into that, obviously, we want to put a little pinch of our salt. I just use the Himalayan pink salt, but some nice rock salt is lovely as well. Try to get the best salt you can because um, the less refined that your salt is, the more uh, of the minerals that are still in it. Okay, so again, go for a good quality. Now, your cracked black pepper, I love black pepper, so I tend to go over the top of this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's lovely. The spices and all have all sort of hit the heat on the pan, so they, the smells out of them are lovely. They, they've released their aroma as well, and they're absolutely smelling delicious. Now, we're gonna go in with some um, stock. 
So, just get a little bit of boiling water. And for the stock, I tend to use the vegetable bullion. So it's this one here, the marigold, you see. And the reason I use it is that it is, it's gluten-free and lactose-free as well. And it is vegan as well, this one. And it's yeast-free as well. And also as well is that it is not really salty the way that a lot of the, um, a lot of the stocks now are that you buy. So for that flavour as well, I absolutely love it. Now, I'll go through a few more of these um, ingredients while I use them in a few minutes. Now, we're also going to go in with about uh, 400 ml of coconut milk. So we'll just pour that in. Might need it all. I'll give it a bit of a stir around. Oh, that's lovely. I don't think we need it all. Okay. We'll leave that bit there. So that is about probably about 350, 350 mils. We're going to turn up the heat on that to bring it up to sort of a boil. And then I'm going to explain some of the other ingredients that I'm going to be putting in as well. So I, what I tend to do, clean my hands there, is I tend to cook off my dried chickpeas and cannellini beans and all in the slow cooker. So what you can do is put these on at night going to bed, next morning they're cooked and then pop them straight into a kilner jar. And then what you can do over the next few days in the fridge, mine keep for about three or four days, is you're just going to pop them into soups and stews and casseroles and all, just add that extra bit of added goodness. They're your great source of plant protein, but also your fiber as well, which obviously to help keep the body well, keep the body, um, keep all the digestive system working well as well. Okay, but again, the protein in that is gonna keep you fuller for longer, and it's also gonna balance your blood sugars as well. Okay, so this is coming up now to a nice little boil, and I'm just gonna turn it down a little notch. Okay, so during this time when you are stuck in the house is, have a little look through your cupboards, okay? See what's in there, that you probably have mixed herbs in there from 1972, but that's okay. Get rid of them. You know, uh, throw out all the old ones and see what's in there. Take this time when you are at home. I know it can be stressful for people as well as that, but take this time at home to sort of maybe get back to basics with the cook and not complicated stuff. But I think for a lot of us is that the cooking has become a bit of a chore where you have to get the dinner on the table or you have to get the lunch on the table. And the joy has kind of come out of it. So what I'm trying to do is say to people is, you know, sort of take the extra time you have now to pick maybe three, four, five recipes that you absolutely love and that you wish you could still make and tweak around with them as well is, and just get back into the kitchen and, you know, enjoy the cooking again for what it is. Now, this is not going to take long to cook. I have it on quite a, um, a sort of boi a boiling roll, so it's quite a heavy roll in there where it's a high temperature. I'm going to go in with a, a few tablespoons of my beans, just to warm them through because these have been, in fact, I'm just going to dump a lot of these actually in. That's it. We give all that stir around. Oh, that is just smelling and looking absolutely divine. Just beautiful. And what I'm just going to bring that back up to the boil again. But what I'm also going to do then at the end is I have some, I've just prepared it here, I have some lovely spinach. Okay, again, you know what is frozen spinach? Absolutely fine. To be honest with you at the moment is you, get, you take whatever you can get your hands on. And the frozen veg as well is the way that it is is that it's picked and it's frozen very very quickly so in fact is in a lot of cases the nutrients can be more in it because they're not sitting around a supermarket shop sweating in a bag okay so don't be afraid of those type of things i had spoken in my in my last video about getting the frozen veg the frozen berries and all into your freezer as well is that you know it, it, it's um don't, don't be under the assumption that they're kind of um, lower nutrient content in them. They're not, okay? They really aren't. So, some of these are quite big. So, we're just going to pick through, make sure there's no kind of off leaves. And we're just going to roughly slice down, okay? And that's it. Yeah. 
Everything is just looking absolutely delicious in here. So I'm going to try it now and just see what the flavour is like. Okay, but there's the most gorgeous smell of curry powder and garlic and ginger in there. Just absolutely delicious. So you can see how quickly looking in the bottom of your fridge can produce a meal. Okay, now you know what is the kids might eat all these veg, but you know what is if you're craving something different maybe and not your bog standard this is just a lovely thing to have goes absolutely lovely with some nice naan bread as well really really tasty and there's no reason in the world why you can't pop in a sliced chicken breast some king prawns or a little bit of turkey or something like that to produce to have meat in it as well absolutely no reason at all now we're just going to try the sauce see what it's like Oh my gosh, it's absolutely gorgeous. It is delicious. The um, taste of the coconut and the ginger and the curry powder together is just beautiful. Really, it's very rich and without being without there being a massive amount of heat in it as well. So now we're just going to go in with our spinach and we're actually going to turn the heat off. Because with the spinach, we really just want to wilt it down. Okay, so because we, if we keep cooking it, we're going to take that lovely um, uh, colour from the greens and we don't want that at all. So we're just going to mix that around and the residual heat from the curry is actually going to cook through all of this. That is just looking beautiful. And you can serve it with rice if you want, but to be honest with you, with all the chickpeas and the cannellini beans in there is, you would probably do well to eat it with rice. It's quite filling. Now, we're just going to spoon up a little bit into a bowl, and I'll let you have a look at what it looks like so. But it really, it smells absolutely divine, and the colours of it are just beautiful. So you can see, and how cheap this is to actually produce. This is so cheap to produce. Now I'm just going to give that a little clean off because the chefy side to me doesn't like food running down the side of my bowls. Okay. And then into that, we have some beautiful colours there. I am just going to go with a few little coriander. My poor coriander is looking a little bit dead to the world. But a few little coriander leaves because the coriander obviously and the curries go beautiful together, okay? So in the top there, we'll find whatever's left of it. I think it's quite bare now at this point. But now is the time to start rolling them yourself if you want to. We'll just go with another couple of the lovely peppers. And you can see there my lovely um, mixed veg and chickpea curry done in about 10 minutes flat, okay? Packed full of your veg, packed full of your nutrients as well. And just so, so good for you. So I'm going to pop up the recipe of this um, for anybody who wants to make it. And by all means, if you have any questions whatsoever or you're unsure of anything I've used here, stick a comment in the box under the video and I will do my best to answer. So have a great day, everybody, and enjoy making the curry. And don't forget as well, keep it up there, don't forget as well, show your photos, share them so I can see how yours turned out. Have a great day, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.